Hey everybody, it's Moonbow here, and welcome back to some more Scrap Mechanic Survival. Now, I know I haven't uploaded a video in a couple of days, but there's a good reason for it. I've been making some huge progress in my survival mode. I've built some things, I've made some improvements to things, so I've got some awesome content lined up for you guys over the next few days. Really excited for that. Now, while I was grinding, I also did another warehouse, and in that warehouse, it was so much fun. I didn't die once, it was very satisfying. And of course, I got another legendary garment box. So I'm gonna open up the legendary garment box, but I think I'm also going to open up an epic one as well. I've been hearing people say in the comments that this is where you get the backpacks from. Uh, maybe it's more of a chance thing, I'm not sure. But let's open up one of each of these here and let's see what we get. Now I'm gonna start with the epic one, you know, and work our way up to the awesome legendary. So let's do that. We got 30 seconds to wait. All right, let's see here. Our first epic garment box. Let's see what we get. Oh, whoa. Some really, really cool looking pants. Now, actually, while I was grinding, I did open up a few of the common ones as well. And look at the jacket that I found. This jacket looks so awesome. And the pants that we got the, from before, they look really cool as well. But I wonder, are these new ones better? I would have to say no. I think I think I really like this one with the tape belt. I feel like, you know, I took that roll of tape from a tape bot, and now it's ours. But let's see, we got Legendary Box. Come on, I want something good out of it. Now, while this Legendary Garment is being made, I will mention that this is going to be a video where we check out a boat that I made. We're gonna use the boat to go out into the water. We're gonna do some, like, seafaring exploration. We're gonna go underwater as well. I have some ideas for marking different, like, areas for farming crude oil and the glue clams as well. And there are actually some very interesting things with regards to a boat and using it for that like underwater um, kind of farming. But let's see here. We've got legendary garment box. Hopefully it's a backpack. Oh, geez, what? Are those overalls? Did I just get a set? I have two sets of overalls now. Let me see these things. Oh my god. Wow, they're pulled up really high. That's kind of awkward. All right, well, no luck today on the backpack. Our quest will continue, uh, but so far I am loving the look of this dude. Everything seems to be really coming together pretty well. But now it is boat time. Now, this is very simple in terms of a boat in Scrap Mechanic. Um, you know, it's trying to be as efficient as possible, but I did want it to look kind of cool at the same time. Now, the water in Scrap Mechanic isn't quite like water that you might imagine it. There's really, there's no proper surface tension or any type of real displacement that happens when you have something in the water. Uh, so as you can see, the water actually cuts through the entire build. So it's more of like a floating kind of barge system more than anything when you're making boats in the game. But the way this boat works is quite simple, actually. I have two thrusters. I have a thruster on the left right here, and I also have a thruster on the right. Now, these thrusters were stolen from my uh, wall climbing buggy, uh, simply because, you know, that really didn't work that great. And I really did want to maybe make my water kind of excursions a little more efficient. Uh, so I have the two thrusters stolen from that. We have a gas tank for each thruster as well. I have them loaded up here. There's a whole bunch of gas cans ready to go. And I also have a storage container on the back here, just a little chest. Uh, so that way, if I go out and do any looting while I'm out on the water, I can always grab more of it by putting extra in the spaces right here. Now, if I hop into the driver's seat, you're gonna see three different buttons and switches. Now, one and two, these are going to be used for the thrusters. Now, this is a pretty simple mechanism for turning on a boat in survival, but all you have to do to go straight is press one and two at the exact same time, just like so. And if I want to turn left, then all I have to do is press one and the whole thing spins around in circles that way. And if I want to turn right, I just have to spin the other way. Now, it is starting to get dark out, which is unfortunate, but there is another opportunity for me to show you something else that this boat can do. So as you can see, we have some front headlights right here. Now, they don't illuminate the surface of the water. As you can see while I'm boating around, we don't actually get any increased visibility there. But the magic happens when I go underwater. Now, you can kind of see already there is a little bit of light being emitted from the front of the boat. But when I press 3, look at that. You can see the lights actually point downward towards the ground. And the reason for that was because 
I wanted to be able to take my boat out into the water, whether it's the middle of the night or not, and be able to see. So if we go down here into this little light spot that we've created, you can see that this actually helps a lot when trying to locate things like these glue clams. Now, speaking of glue clams, I'm going to need a whole bunch of them for my next idea that I wanted to do in the video here. And my idea was to create beacons that, like, signal different locations or different, like, things that I might want to come back to uh, regularly when I'm going out into the water. So the main thing for that would probably be hot spots for oil geysers. I have one cave. I think the one cave has like 15, if not more, oil geysers in it. So we're going to go over there and take a look at it in a moment. Uh, but I'm going to start gathering a bunch of these glue clams overnight. I'm going to try and make a bunch of controllers as well. And I'm going to start setting up the beacons. All right, the sun is back up. I have a whole bunch of glue clams. Now what I'm going to use for these glue clams is I am going to make a whole bunch of controllers. Well, oh, I mean, I say a whole bunch of controllers. Uh, but I'm really only going to be making, like, three of them because, uh, they're pretty expensive in glues. So, I'm going to make three controllers, a bunch of lights, and then we're going to go and find some hot spots for oil. And we're going to mark them with our little tiny light sentries. And now I realized I only grabbed enough glue for the controllers and not enough for the lights. The lights use glue as well, but I forgot. I have all of these lights that I scavenged from all of the shacks that you find out on the road. Uh, so I guess I'll be able to use these instead. All right, so we've got our three controllers. We've got the lights. Now I guess I need uh, three bearings, one for each controller. Now we only need the one bearing. Oh, I already had a controller here. Whoops. So yeah, I'm going to craft the three bearings. I don't need to upgrade those controllers at all because there is only going to be the one bearing attached to them. Uh, and we're going to set these beacons up. Okay, I think I'm all ready to go. I'm going to be using stone to build up from the ocean floor all the way up to the surface uh, so that the light beacons are actually going to be visible uh, from above water so I don't have to constantly look under the water, especially at night when I'm trying to go to my specific locations. All right, so let's head on out to the first point of interest. Now, this is one that I just, I know kind of where it is. It's just off in this direction right here. I uh, know I might have actually, is that, no, I don't think I just went over it right there. I'm pretty sure... It's kind of farther all the way down at this side, and <laughs> this is why I'm putting these beacons here. Alright, I think it's right here. These caves are absolutely insane. I don't know if the oil spawns uh, are consistent between all of the caves, but let's go down here. Let's gather all of this oil and see how much we get. I don't have any right now, so let's go here. One, two, three, and then we go down even farther. Now we're at 11. 12. This one I can't grab. I'm assuming I think everyone might have that same problem. And then we go all the way down to the bottom of the cave. That's crazy. 18. 18 crude oil just from this one cave. And we even just got four gas cans as well, actually, which is like even more crude oil, technically. So it's understandable that I want this cave to be very easy to spot. Now, obviously... I pretty much know where it is. You know, I left the mechanic shop over there. We came over here to this location. Very simple, but from the highest point to save on some of these materials, I am going to build a pillar that goes above the surface. All right, right about... Whoa, whoa, right about here. Okay, there we go. Now we have what we need, I think. Let's grab our bearings. Let's stick a bearing down. And then I think what I'm going to do is, I am going to put, like, uh, maybe three blocks on either side, like so. And now these lights are kind of annoying because they aren't, they aren't a single block width. They are, like, an, an even block width, which is unfortunate. So I'm just going to have to kind of make do with what I got here. I'm going to complete it anyway, though, just because, you know, I just, I have to do that. And then we're going to take our controller. I'm going to stick a controller right here underwater, hook it up to that. Now, these beacons, I'm going to want them to be as bright as possible, even though it probably doesn't really matter on the surface of the water. And then we're going to set this bearing to rotate 360 degrees on loop, and I realized I don't have any way to turn it on right now. All right, let's put a switch there. Put the switch to the controller. Turn the switch on, and maybe we'll just make this go a little bit faster. There we go. Now, I'm going to want to paint these white 
I think white light is the brightest in uh, survival here. So we're going to want those to be on nice and bright. And now we have our beacon signaling that right here is a spot that we can get 18 crude oil in one dive, which is huge. Now, as for like crude oil farming efficiency with a boat, you can farm more oil than you use from the boat as long as you go underwater for like a certain amount of time. Like you want to go down for your whole breath and then come up. So what I typically do is I'll bring my boat over to like a patch of crude oil, just like this. I'll actually bring my boat up forward ahead of it so you can see all of the crude oil is now behind my boat and what I'll do is with this my single breath here I'll go down I will grab all the crude oil and I'll even grab glue clams if I'm kind of in need of them uh, typically if I'm looking for crude oil then it's like my focus and the only thing I farm is the crude oil and I totally skip over these glue clams and, and that's just for like the sake of efficiency but we grab the final oils just like that. Now here's an awesome thing to know about the boat as well, and this is something that you might want to do with your boat too, is have your seat accessible from the bottom of the water here. And now when I get so close to it, you can see that I can now enter the seat. So if I'm drowning and I really need to get out of the water, as soon as I get into my seat, it brings us up out of the water. So it basically teleports you from like a huge distance. And we can actually see how much of a distance there actually is gained by going into third person. So I can get into the seat right about here. Look at that. That's a huge amount of time saved when you're trying to loot stuff underwater. Now the question is, how much am I going to burn from here to the next location? So you can see up ahead of me, there's like what seems to be four of them right there. Now we can take a look. We have four left in this one here and we have two left in that one. So why don't I actually equalize these here? I'm going to put three there and three there, just so it's easier to keep track of. And now I'm gonna just kind of straight shoot it all the way over here to this next batch. We're gonna turn them off, let it come to a stop, hop into the water. Now I'm gonna grab these crude oils, one, two, three, and I think there was a fourth one right here. The beauty of crude oil is that it has a five to five ratio, um, which basically, you know, in a way is like one to one for every crude oil that you will gather you're going to be able to make uh, a gas can with it so long as you have the five total. Uh, so in this case here, we grabbed uh, four of them and we ended up burning. I think we leveled it off to uh, three. So that means that we farmed four and we burned two, which is a gain, but it's, it's not necessarily the most efficient. So whether or not it's better to go out and swim for all of your oil or if it's better to boat is debatable. I feel like there would have to be some testing done with time frames. Uh, how long does it take? How much did you come back with? And, and all that kind of stuff. So that would be a lot of work to figure out. And now I want to find... Uh oh, I think I might have went past it. There's another cave somewhere. You know what? Let's just keep on going. Let's find another cave. And I'm going to put another beacon down. And I want to see if there's going to be the same amount of uh, oil geysers in that cave. Okay, this is the other cave system right here. Now it's, it's starting to get kind of dark. At the very least, I can point these lights here. Uh, down towards the cave just like so uh, so that's gonna help us out a little bit while we're diving down but I want to see how many there are here now I think I actually looted this not long ago but I'm gonna count them up uh, just to see now I just went to the bottom of this cave and I'm pretty sure I only counted 16 I think there is some RNG in terms of how many geysers will appear at any given cave so the one with 18 Feels like it's pretty substantial, but I mean 16, that's still a lot as well. So no matter what, I am going to place a beacon down at this cave here. And I feel like for the most part, the beacons are going to start with the caves. And then as I find kind of like various deposits out in the open, I will mark those as well. All right, it's all done. We just need to set it all up now. And it's dark again, obviously. And this is actually going to be a very good opportunity to give it a test run and see how effective these beacons actually are because I think I might have to be pretty close to see where they are. Uh, now, that's not necessarily the main focus of them. I want it to be able to more so just not have to constantly scan underwater and be able to just kind of quickly skim the top of it. Now, the one off in the distance that way clearly is not rendering. So let's kind of go away from this one and see how far we can get before it disappears. Okay, it's still there. Still there. Oh, I think it's starting to disappear now. A little bit farther. We can still see it. Barely. 
farther even. Wow, look at that! It's still visible! What about that one over there? Okay, that one is not visible yet. Let's keep going. Okay, there, we just had the full thing unrender. But look, I can still see the beam spinning. It's very hard to see in the dark, but it is still out there. Now, like I mentioned though, the point of this is more so to be able to just kind of cruise along and I can be like, oh, look, here's this beacon right here. I know there's a cave down there. I know there's a whole bunch of crude oil. I'm gonna swim down and grab it. All right, so I just found the third and final cave. I just checked to see how much crude oil I can get from it. And this one had 17 crude oil. So it seems like the first one we checked out had 18. The second one had 16. And then this one is just kind of in between with 17, which is very... Oh, well, actually, considering this one, I guess that one would technically be 18 as well. Maybe they all have 18. Now, if that is the case and they all have 18, I'm not mad at that. That is perfectly fine for me. Uh, and that just means that that is some quick and easy fuel to grab at each of these cave locations. So, that means we are going to set up our final beacon right here at this cave. Now, one thing that's a lot of fun to do out on the water is go to the islands. There's islands that have buildings in them that you can loot. Uh, I think they're very similar, if not the same, as the buildings that you would find out in the mainland. Uh, but I'm going to head back to base. I'm going to kind of refine all of this crude oil into gas that we can use. And then why don't we go and check out one of those islands over there and uh, see what it's all about. Alright, I've just crafted all of that crude oil. Now, this might be a bit of an indication as to uh, the efficiency of the boat. But, remember, I didn't fully loot for gas. I was going around, I was building the things, I was exploring a little bit more as well. Uh, so you can see we're pretty much right back to where we were when we first started going out into the uh, excursion there. But now that the gas is all done though, we can use this boat. Let's head on over to that island. You can see there's actually an island all the way off in the distance there. Let's head on over. We're gonna pass one of our beacons. Look at that. I'm so happy to have these beacons now because I know there's a cave right there. I mean, sure, I could kind of look underwater and see, but if you're kind of far like this, you know, you might only see a rock. It's not evident that it's a cave right away. So when you're looking above the water, there's no question about it. Now, normally when I head over to an island like this, though, I would definitely be grabbing all of this crude oil on the bottom of the ocean. Uh, but this is a little bit more of like a speed test, just to show you guys how much faster it is to have a boat. Now, I think I might do a video on like boat efficiency and, you know, if there is merit to using a boat to farm oil or if it's better to go and swim for it. Uh, like I said though, there's a lot of different time balancing and uh, things that you can do to make things better. But here we go, we're gonna stop at this island. And this is, yeah, this is just like one of the buildings that you would see in the mainland. So it might not be anything too crazy or special, uh, but it's just so cool to think that there's an island out here with this building on it. Now let's go up a little bit higher here. Okay, there's no floor there. We're gonna have to go up one more. Now I've been using the spud gun a lot lately. How much ammo do I have? Okay, I have, I got like a decent amount of ammo. Now, one thing I've been doing is I've been getting into the habit of doing the three shot swing method. This is what I'm, this is what I'm calling it. So basically, it takes four spuds to destroy a hay bot. But it, it's, it's, it's really weird. If you want to use your spuds and hammer, you have to use three spuds and then your hammer. So watch this. One, two, and three. And now we're going to swing our hammer and then he's done. So that just saved us a single spud. Now, it's really weird, like I mentioned, if... If I can try and show you guys this, now three hits with the spud gun was enough to make it so that it was one hammer hit, right? So watch this though, if I do two hits with the spud gun, there's one, there's two. So you would think maybe it would take two hits with the hammer, right? As opposed to the one single hit, but watch this. It still took three hammer swings, even though I hit it twice with the spud gun. Now I don't know if that's like a damage scaling thing or what. Uh, but we can see it again in action here. One, two, three, swing. And then that destroys him. But two, you have to do the full three swings. It it doesn't really make sense. Now, there are other ways to test it, I think, if you change the order in which you're kind of doing things. So maybe if I try and swing my hammer and then shoot with the spud gun, I might get some slightly different results. But I don't think there's any hay bots left on this island. Oh. I hear one actually. I want to try and swing my hammer. Okay, there he is. 
So three hits with the spud gun is one single swing. Two hits with the spud gun is still three swings, which doesn't make any sense. And so now let's say I do two swings with the hammer. How many spuds was it, would it take? Because if I do one swing, then that means we know for sure it's going to be three spuds because we already tested that in the reverse order. Uh, so let's see if two swings does anything. One, two, and then the spud gun. One, two, three. So it took three with the two swings. So I don't, I don't really understand how damage is being calculated. Now I have been here before and I actually created this little like rod thing. And I almost fell off of it onto the ground. I didn't actually finish it, but I still managed to hit the water. But I'm going to add that extra length just to be safe. And the reason why I did this was because you can't do this on the mainland buildings. I mean, I guess if there's like a hay bale at the bottom, you can land on the hay. Uh, but that's kind of risky because you have to, you know, really make sure you hit it. But up here, all you have to do is jump off of it into the water like this. And there we go. We're back down. So this is... It's a pretty quick way to loot. Now, how much fuel did we use getting here? I think I had 13 extra in the end. Yeah, so we went from 13 down to 1, which means we used 12 of there. And, okay, we only ended up using 11 in this one. Uh, so basically, 24 gas cans to go from over there, you can see the mechanic shop, to over here. Is it worth it? I'm not too sure about that. Now, it might not be worth it, but is it fun? Absolutely. And in case you're wondering, here is the first person view of the boat. Really loving it. Super smooth ride. Got the windshield in the front there. The whole boat is actually made on the bubble block. You can see I have a whole bunch of bubble blocks as well as the wood. They are both very buoyant. The bubble block being the most buoyant block in the game. So I, I had a bit of an issue trying to make my boat work properly. And the thrusters... They really, I think they can really feel the drag of the boat in the water because it is not an efficient creation. Now, one thing every boat needs is a dock. I have this thing just floating dangerously out in the water. And so what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want some type of area that I can have where I can keep my boat safe, you know, just in case there's stormy weather. Okay, there's not going to be any stormy weather, but, you know, I like to be prepared anyway. So why don't I just build like a little bit of a platform system here, a little wharf or dock that I can use to kind of get in and out of my boat. And maybe that might help me stop the habit of constantly getting out of the boat and then kind of knocking myself out every time. There we go. That's not a bad looking dock. It's pretty simple. I mean, I could probably expand on it. But remember, this is not my permanent base, guys. This is only temporary. As we progress in our vehicle building, so that once we're ready to move to our next base, we're gonna have all the vehicles that we need. Now, this is, I realize I don't have... I don't have any type of reverse function in this boat. So I think I might have to try and do, like, some really slick boat maneuvering here. Let's see if I can do this. Like this, and then spin it. Oh, yeah, look at that! Doesn't get any better than that. All right, so the sun is going down. It's time to relax on our new little boat here and dock. It's been very satisfying to use this boat. Like I said, the efficiencies aren't 100%. Uh, there might be room for improvement. I'm going to be doing some testing. I'll put the testing out in a video as well for some information so you guys can see if there's different ways to make this a better thing or maybe we are doomed to kind of really bog down our fuel consumption when we're boating. Uh, but nonetheless, guys, if you did enjoy the build or the video, then let me know by hitting that like button. If you guys want to tune in for some more Scrap Mechanic Survival and Endless Scrap Mechanic, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. Maybe even turn on some notifications so you can get the latest and the craziest coming from me in Scrap Mechanic. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. So, bye for now.